Manali the next morning, everyone was raring to go. The cool weather and the clear skies were perfect to lift everybody's mood. I was also getting to know the other riders. It's my first ride, so for me, the bike plays an important role, my ass plays an important role. I can bleep, bleep that out, but uh, yeah, and the weather, of course, yeah, and my gear. I have done uh, like some 1,200 kilometers uh, ride to the Western Ghats in the Kerala, like some three days trip. Today we'll be uh, riding for some 130 kilometers and like it's gonna be mostly the guard roads much more worse than what we uh, came across yesterday. I wanted to come to uh, uh, Himalayas so and I wanted to ride a motorcycle. Long way just for Himalayas Odyssey. Himalayan Odyssey. See those uh, mountains and snow <laughs> and to know that this is Himalayas and I'm here. Our first pass of the journey lay ahead of us and everyone was looking forward to the mountains. Remember I told you yesterday was the toughest day on the Odyssey? Yeah, so actually today is the <laughs> toughest day. <laughs> One is you're getting your first taste of uh, high altitude and uh, it's about 12,000 something feet high, which is quite high. So the first thing to remember is not to spend too much time at the pass, which might not really be useful because uh, there's, there might still be uh, some traffic and stuff like that. If we don't get traffic, we are very lucky. Then I think we'll have a clean uh, run back. Rotang was the target. Patiently, it waited for us. The road snaked its way up. Coiling back and forth, taking us higher and higher into the colder, treacherous terrain. The road degenerated into dirt lanes. The passing vehicles churned the cold mountain water into the brown mud, making the route slippery and bone jarring. But we kept climbing. The clouds seemed to be hiding the pass. But even when we rode through the soft white haze, Rotang wasn't any nearer. We made a quick stop to regroup before pushing ahead for Rotang. It makes sense to take small breaks for snacks and some rest as you tire very quickly in high altitudes. It's been challenging, I think it's just the beginning now. Because until now we had proper roads, we could cover them in good time. Now is where the challenge starts from Rotang and beyond. Where we don't know how the conditions are going to be, how the road is going to be, how the weather is going to be. So it's, no one knows yet, so it's going to be a surprise for all of us. Refreshed, we struck out, keen to cross the pass quickly. But it was not to be. The road was very narrow, with steep drop-off on one side and the mountain face on the other. Even our bikes couldn't wriggle through this traffic jam. We had no option but to wait it out. And as it turned out, the wait was long. Very, very long. Finally, when the traffic started moving, we came to the cause of the jam. A freshly cleared landslide had made a dirt track course out of the road. Getting through it required lots of talk, a proper path selection and lots of luck. And sure enough, most people weren't very lucky. The mud was knee deep in places. The classic 500 luckily made it through without getting bogged down. The experience was incredibly exhilarating and just as tiring. We left Manali at about 7 in the morning. It's 2 in the afternoon. We've done maybe about 35, 40 kilometers. And it's the last 5 odd kilometers that have been crazy because there was crazy traffic. It was just locked together. We weren't moving for hours. And then now that it's opened up, it's all thick slush like this. And you really need the talk of the classic 500 to pull yourself through. The 350 struggles a bit. You need good control over your bike. Otherwise, that does tend to happen and it has been very, very demanding. And we're still not actually at Rotang, we're going to cross it in a little while. 
Once all the bikes made it through the slush, we rode up to Rotang. With the white mist around us, I sat down to have a quick bite of rajma and rice to energize myself. After that, we started the long descent down towards Koksa. The route seemed to wind even more vehemently on the way down. The rough road made progress slower still. But with the mountains now to give me company, I didn't mind it at all. The road at some points was so narrow that I had to pull over to let trucks pass. Relaxed, I coasted down towards Koksar. From here, we headed on towards Kelong. The road now morphed into a welcoming smooth strip of tarmac that was carelessly strewn along the valley. The Pir Panjal range of mountains stretched ahead magnificently. The peaks were lit orange by the setting sun. We followed on, hoping to make it to Kelong once again before sunset. Well, Rotang certainly offered a lot of challenges to the riders and things aren't going to be easy after this as well. Today we head out to conquer Baralachla and then camp towards Sarchu. Everybody's just about getting ready to head out. The pass that we are taking is Baralachla. There's a major water crossing uh, before that pass. Just outside of Kelong is Tandi, which is a notable stop point for all travellers heading to Ladakh. That too for a very important reason, a signboard. Always, always watch out for it. Now if signboards were celebrities, this one would be a superstar because this signboard for the Indian oil petrol pump here is probably the most photographed one in the entire country because for 365 kilometers from here, there's no petrol pump, which means if you have to make it to Leh, you have to tank up here. You have to carry a little bit of extra possibly and uh, make sure you do that because you don't want to run dry in the terrain that comes up. Like I said, the terrain can be tough, but I was caught unawares by the road. It was primarily dirt and rock. It made life quite difficult. The dust kicked up by the vehicles made it almost impossible to breathe. It helped me understand what it is like to be a bike with a choked air filter. It felt like my lungs were lined with a thick layer of brown mud. The road kept playing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, going from dusty and bumpy to unblemished and absolutely serene. It was a blast to wind down those roads. Every now and then, a few drops of rain would pitter down from the sky, which meant making a stop to put on rain gear. A frantic and tiresome activity, but it beats getting wet in the cold climate. At our next regroup point in Darcha, all the bikes had to be registered with the police check post before heading on towards Sarchu. Sarchu.